Check it out. We've got all new gameplay that just dropped for Outriders, showcasing a world tier 15 build. This is so impressive. Plus, we get to see some monsters, creatures, some really cool environments in these gameplay clips. So a lot here to divulge. Plus also the Square Enix community manager actually breaks down the action for us and explains what exactly is going on with this build. This is like an in-game build and it showcases how you can really rotate between these epic abilities to really take over the battlefield plus i've got some other news to go over as well so let's do this hey everyone what's happening hope you're doing good overworld games here and let's dive straight into the outriders news right now starting right here with the post it says this week we've shown you the components of the pyromancer's fire witch build now let's see it in action and you know what let's do that let's watch and see what the community manager has to say about what is going on in this video. So let us begin. Over the past few days, we've shown you the components of the Pyromancer's Fire Witch build. Now let's see in action. The Fire Witch build relies heavily on the proper sequencing of skills. Using certain skills that currently benefit from our chosen nodes and mods will enable follow-up skills to be more effective. At six seconds, Overheat has the shortest cooldown of our skills, so we will start with that, especially as it will maximize our build's efficiency. Using Overheat will provide us with a Anomaly Power Boost, but it will additionally damage all enemies in the area and mark them. Marked enemies take additional damage and we'll be able to see their nameplates even when they are hidden behind level geometry. Think of Overheat as a sonar of sorts. Seeing enemy nameplates makes aiming our Phaser Beam that much easier. Phaser deals a ton of damage, but it will also apply the burn status to enemies. Now we just throw in two of our eruption skills into the mix and watch the body parts rain upon us. A quick use of our refreshed overheat skill will ensure that enemies continue to suffer from our debuffs. Using eruption for the third time will trigger its cooldown, meaning that we now have to switch back and forth between phaser and overheat until eruption is available again. Our Inferno Seed Weapon will additionally inflict burn onto enemies, which our overheat skill can take great advantage of. We can then use our guns to pick off individual enemies until our skill combos are ready to be used again. The key to this build will lie in your ability to hit as many enemies as possible with each phase of beam and eruption. To do so, you will need to keep on the move to ensure you can always line up as many enemies as possible. And for the moments in between all that, your Inferno Seed can deal plenty of damage. In short, the skill sequence for the Fire Witch is as follows. Overheat, Phaser, Eruption, Eruption, Overheat, Eruption, Phaser, Overheat. So that is the Fire Witch build. Note that this is simply an example build that some of our team like to play with. It's just one of four classes, each of which has access to eight skills and thousands of mod combinations. You can, of course, create your own builds and modifications in order to personalize your Outriders experience, and we look forward to seeing what you come up with. So yeah, that was really cool. I'm wondering how many of you are now going to be switching to the Pyromancer because of that video. I am super curious. I'm actually considering it. It looks freaking awesome. I love how you actually have to manage rotating between your skills and abilities based on the cooldown of those abilities. So you really, really have to be mindful of that when you are on the battlefield. Plus, we did get to see uh, a lot of monsters and creatures, something that has been completely missing from the demo. And I think a lot of people that played the demo and aren't really following this game are going to be uh, really surprised by the variety in the actual enemy types when the full game finally releases. Now, I do have some other news here that we're going to be talking about. So uh, let's go ahead and dive into that right now. We have a new sweepstakes. This is an official thing that was recently announced as we've teamed up with Pop Art to bring some of his incredible Xbox Series XS controller designs to life and give them away via sweepstakes. And there's uh, how you can enter. I'll throw this link in the description, description, excuse me, below. But the sweepstakes will run until April 9th 
as well. And then there will be six winners selected who will be able to choose their choice of controller. So it looks really, really cool. So yeah, check out the description for more information about that one. Now, also, uh, they released some interesting details about how you guys have been playing the game and what is the most popular class and that sort of thing. It is definitely really interesting. It says, I'm glad all the classes got used equally. That means people are enjoying the game. Philly No Stake posted this out right here. Uh, and this is the image that they posted. Of course, you have total hours played. But what I'm mostly interested in right here is this, the classes, how equally played they are. You can see, of course, the Trickster is the go-to. That's my favorite, by the way, uh, is the Trickster being able to move around the battlefield so very quickly. And Pyromancer comes in second place. What surprised me, though, was Technomancer outdid Devastator. I thought for sure Technomancer was going to be in fourth place for some reason, but I'm assuming perhaps Devastator is too familiar to players or something like that maybe technomancer uh, mixes it up but overall it's really equal and really evened out uh, as you can see uh, between all the classes which is really really cool now in other news it looks like the embargo is being slowly lifted uh, so that content creators that currently have outriders and press outlets that have the game it seems like right now they're working on content videos and perhaps even working on the reviews for this game. Let's take a look right here. Uh, this is a post from Garsk, I think it is. It says, since people keep asking, yes, the embargo has been lifted partially. You'll see certain large creators showing off specific legendary armor sets, new missions, abilities that we don't have uh, unlocked yet, skill tree builds, etc. However, uh, reviews are probably still locked until Sunday or Monday right there so you know I've been kind of tracking this as well out on social media and I've seen people saying that they don't have their review copy of Outriders and I do know that some content creators are already releasing like a series of videos as well about certain classes again weapons things like that that they're going to be showcasing in the future so that's cool and we should be getting more information uh, down the road. Now this is noteworthy right here. I wanted to talk about uh, what Game Rant had to say in this article. I thought this was cool. It says, Outrider should steal a mechanic from Warframe. Let's take a look and see what, uh, and see what they're talking about right here. It says, with Outrider's demo giving players a quick glimpse of some of the early gameplay, some players are starting to finally get an idea of what games it most resembles however while many have been quick to proclaim people can fly's new title the next destiny killer it might do better by looking to similar titles like warframe for both comparisons and potential new features one feature from warframe that outrider should adapt is the ability to hatch and tame pets that can accompany the player and help fight during missions that'd be cool considering the collection of strange alien animals on enoch there are plenty of creatures to choose from to tame, some of which would be neat to have as a companion and others that would be a bit over the top, but still fun. I think this is really cool. Of course, we already ha uh, have, excuse me, uh, the truck. You have, of course, the big creatures, but once you get into uh, roaming around between hub spaces, you will get the truck, which I think is like a really cool, I guess you would say, side character, if you would that you can customize, you can go out and kill creatures and actually put your trophies on the truck. So I think that's a good start uh, right there. And then maybe, maybe just maybe, if you guys want it, perhaps they could consider adding uh, something like pets uh, to Outriders. Who knows, but I think that would be pretty neat and I wanted to highlight that. Let me know what you think about that one. Uh, as well all right now let's go over your top comments from my previous video uh which was definitely interesting it was called fans voice new concerns and the dev team responds about all sorts uh of concerns about you know people being accused of falsely cheating that sort of thing so lexus wade says this cheater should have that one npc over by the fighting match Follow them around everywhere, randomly screaming, he cheated, he cheated. <laughs> Can you imagine? 
Uh, that would be like worse than the, uh, I think it's called the dunce cap from um, GTA Online. Adub says, I don't think there's any other dev team that has been so included with the community, answering questions, making changes, and taking notes for future fixes. This team actually listens and cares about the product that they are making and their customers' concerns. Amazing work, people can fly. My favorite game dev so far. Can't wait for this game. Now, Hatchet says this, imagine what the Reddit will look like as all the watermark cheaters start claiming that they were wrongfully accused. Oh my God, it's gonna be epic. That's the one thing that I was thinking as well. Silky says this, I'll be playing on Series X, preloaded and ready to rock. So he is ready to go, already preloaded. Uh, Dia says this, had quite the 12 year old reaction when you said it was going to be in uh, their back end. <laughs> The Unforger says, I like how you are doing daily updates. Keeps me up with things. Uh, so there you guys have it, uh, your top comments. Yeah, it seems like there's a lot of excitement around this game. I'm feeling the excitement as well. I hope it doesn't turn into dis disappointment, but I'm just like feeling like People Can Fly is really on it. They are paying attention to things. They've had so much time with the demo to really test the servers, test the waters, and get to know the game and the community. So. I'm curious now what happens on April 1st. Will it be a 100% smooth launch? Probably not. It probably won't be perfect, but hey, it seems like, again, people can fly. Uh, as they have said, they will be there for support and they are ready to fix the big, biggest issues with hot fixes, back end fixes, that sort of thing, server side, what have you. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. And I really do wish them the best luck with releasing this game. But. Uh, thank you all once again for watching. That uh, Fire Witch looks freaking badass. I am half tempted just to start with the Pyromancer now, but I think I'm still going to hold my ground and play Trickster. But thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time. Take care.